Good morning, church. We are so excited and glad that you are here with us this morning. If you are visiting with us, we are especially thankful that you are here. And if you are here because you got an invitation to be here, we are especially even more so thankful that you have come to be a part of our service here today. This is our Bring a Friend to Church Sunday. So I'm excited because I sent out about 35 like actual invitations with like a stamp, uh, you know, that you handwrite it and somebody takes it to people's house. It's, it's a weird thing, but it still happens, right? And I sent a whole bunch of those out and, and I have at least one family that came. So I do have a friend. You guys can see that now, right? So there's, there's proof of that and I'm thankful for that. Hey, today also, we do this every third Sunday in September, because every third Sunday in September is the National Back to Church Sunday. So it's kind of cool that we here are participating with other churches in California and literally all across the U.S. who invited someone to church. Maybe someone to come back to church that hasn't been for a while. Maybe someone who normally goes to another church where you are spiritually fed and where you are plugged in and in Involved. And if you're visiting with us from there, that's great. We're so glad you are here. And then maybe someone who for the first time can come and experience the worship of God's church and the fellowship of the family of God. And for that, we are so thankful that you are here this morning. If you got a bulletin this morning, I want you to take that out because inside this bulletin, there is an outline and this has some blanks and some scriptures and some things to help you follow along as with today being our Bring a Friend to Church Sunday, I always feel like it's a perfect time to start and to launch a brand new sermon series. So today I'm beginning a new sermon series. Do, do we have the, the wrong slides, James? Did I send the wrong slides? Yeah, those are last week's slides. Did I send the wrong slides, maybe? Okay. Uh, ignore the slides for a minute, but what we are going to start is a brand new uh, sermon series that I'm calling Cultivate, Let's Grow Together. Now, this is a four-part sermon series that's going to take us into the fall season because believe it or not, one week from today is the first day of fall. And I was peeking at the weather, and I noticed that finally we're going to have some days this week that might feel fallish, at least for us in this part of the country. At least it's not going to be triple digits this next week. But next Sunday is the first Sunday of fall. So this series is going to, going to take us into that fall season. You know, when you think of something being cultivated, any of you that have had any kind of agriculture background, or if you just know of someone who, who farms or grows, the idea of cultivating means you're taking the soil, you're, you're taking something to prepare it, to be able to plant a seed, for that seed to nurture, for that seed to grow, and for that seed to produce a fruit or to produce uh, some kind of a crop. And I think the same is true for us spiritually, that there are an aspect of cultivating our lives to spiritually grow and to produce fruit. And the good news is that that cultivation Growing spiritually, producing fruit for the Lord is not something that you need to, and in fact, is not something that you're supposed to do by yourself. So, so that's why I'm calling this series Cultivate, and it's the idea of let's grow together. Over the next four weeks, we're going to explore what it means to grow as a church community, how we can cultivate deeper relationships, how we can live out this mission that we believe we have to follow in the footsteps of our King, our Savior, our Lord Jesus, to be disciples of His. And what we're going to do for the next four weeks, if you look at this slide right here, I apologize, I, uh, uh, sometimes when you put things on one and you transfer to another, but uh, week one today is Cultivate Connections. Two weeks, we're going to do cultivate a heart of compassion. Week three, we're going to cultivate a spirit of generosity. And on week four, we're going to talk about cultivating uh, hope 
and transformation. Now, the other thing that this series is going to do, and this is why I'm so excited if you're visiting and, and, and if you're a guest and a friend that came today, because this series is going to build up to the next slide you'll see is our Walk for Water event. Now, this is the sixth year in a row that we here at Ham Lane have partnered with Healing Hands International to do a Walk for water event. Now, this QR code right there, please feel free if you want to even right now, you can take a picture of that. You can and scan that. That'll take you right to our Walk for Water page. There you can sign up to walk. Uh, you'll sign up to get a free t-shirt and you can help us to raise funds as we are striving to build wells in places that so desperately need wells and clean water. Now, we call this walk for the number four water because most of the places where we're building these wells, the average person there will walk four miles to get water, usually not clean, usually not safe to drink, but that's still the water source they have and bring it back to their village. So what we're going to do on Saturday, October 5th, we're going to meet right here in the parking lot. We have these five-gallon jerry cans. You'll see one in the other room if you stay for our, our, our fellowship potluck afterwards. And if we start here, the cans are empty. We walk two miles down Ham Lane uh, east or west, rather, on Turner Road. We go into Lodi Lake. We go to the top, the north side of Lodi Lake, back into the Nature Trail to the McCullamy River at a, at a point that is exactly two miles from this parking lot to there. We, we fill those five-gallon jugs up, and then we walk them back two miles. And it just gives you an awareness. It gives you just a small sample of what some people do every day to bring back the amount of water that you and I will flush twice in a toilet at our house, right? So this is a great event. Now, it takes $7,500 to build one well. And by the grace of God, the last four years in a row, we have raised enough money here as a church family and throughout with the community help to build two wells. And my prayer is that this year, we'll build at least two wells. You join in, maybe it'll make it three wells. So I want you to be a part of our Walk for Water uh, uh, Saturday, and then that Sunday, we're going to celebrate it. And this whole series is going to build up to that because the Walk for Water theme this year is cultivate, because we are helping villages and people literally all over the world to cultivate and transform their village in the name of Jesus, who the promise of Jesus is even to give a cup of cold water in his name is something for which you will be rewarded. But this morning, we're going to kick it off with week one, cultivate connections. And I want to talk about a very specific and a very important connection, and that's being connected to a church family. The first scripture on the top of your outline, it's here on this big screen behind me, comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. There the Bible says, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. You know, the Bible teaches that we were created for community. God formed us for fellowship. We are not meant to be an isolated people. In fact, when you read the Bible, I was privileged to do one of our young men in this congregation just got married uh, yesterday, and he's about the same age as, as our kids, you know, so he's someone I watched grow up, and now here he is, married young man. And I, I shared yesterday, in the book of Genesis, the Bible says that when God would create everything he would create on each day of creation, he would step back and he would look at what he had created, and the Bible says that God said, it is good. And then he created man, and he said man was very good. Man was the only thing in creation that God actually formed into creation. If you read the Genesis account, he spoke everything else into creation. Man, he formed, and he breathed his life, and he made us in his image. But do you know, and I know most of you do know, do you know what the first thing in the Bible God says is not good? It's for man to be alone, because we were created for community. We were formed to have fellowship. We are meant 
to thrive well when we are together because you grow better together than you do by yourself. And so it is essential for us to be making, if we want to cultivate this this spiritual walk, if we want to grow in our faith, if we want to be disciples who are following in the footsteps of Jesus, which is our theme this year as a church family, then we need to cultivate good connections, to do things together, to, to obey the one another commands. You ever seen the one another commands? In your Bible, just in the New Testament, there are over 50 one another commands. Love one another, care for one another, forgive one another, bear with one another, right? Encourage one another. And it goes on and on and on and on. And it's really hard. I, I know those of you who hear me preach a lot have heard me say this a lot, but it's really hard to one another, one another by yourself. Amen? That's hard to do. And so it's essential to be plugged in. It's essential to be a part of a church family, to be a member of the church. So what I want to do this morning, just for a few minutes, I want to share with you four benefits of being connected as a member of the church. And this is something that I want for this crowd today, especially. I mean, for those of you who are members here, I want to challenge you that your membership is more than just showing up and sitting here on a Sunday morning. Uh, For those of you who are visiting as a friend, and maybe you have a church home, where again, where that's where you are spiritually fed, that's where you are plugged in, and that's where you are contributing, that's great. But I want to encourage you to understand that there are benefits to being connected to that church family. And if you're here this morning and you don't have a church family, I want to encourage you to connect to this church family, because we need you, and you need us, because we were created for connections. So number one on your outline, fill in this first blank. The benefit of being connected as a church member is it connects me to God's eternal purpose. It connects me to God's eternal purpose. Being connected as a church member is so much more than attending a church service. There's a difference between an attender and a member, right? And to understand, to discover, to realize that when I am connected and a part of a church family, that I am actually a part of something bigger than myself. I am literally participating in God's eternal purpose for our lives. And every human heart Every one of us here this morning, anyone listening online, we all have a longing for purpose. I mean, I think all of us have a desire to feel like there is something that I belong to. There is something that I was created to do. I'm not just an accident, right? I'm not just goo that somehow got formed and, and became what you are, but you were created for a purpose. And being a part, being connected as a member of the church, means that you are a part of the mission of the church. When you're connected as a member of God's church, you step into God's grand and God's eternal plan that began when he created everything and will run until the fulfillment of him coming back and establishing and restoring his kingdom here on earth. So a part of that mission, a part of that purpose comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. These are some of the very last words that Jesus spoke to his first followers. And the last words of Jesus should be our first priority as followers of Jesus, because he says this, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. See, we are a part of this plan, this plan to become disciples and followers of Jesus, and then to make disciples and followers of Jesus 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to teach them what Jesus taught, to, to live out what Jesus did so that we can do what Jesus did. There was a time when Christine and I, back when we were teenagers involved in the church, there were these popular bracelets in the 90s that all the cool youth kids had that said WWJD. Do you remember what that stood for? Yeah, what would Jesus do? And it's a great question. There's nothing wrong with it. But you know what a better question is for those of us who call ourselves Christians, who call ourselves Jesus followers? What did Jesus do? Because let's do that. Amen? Let's do what Jesus did. And one of the things that Jesus did was make disciples who make disciples. And what we are striving to do as a church is to make disciples who will make disciples. We call it our good mission. In fact, I didn't put it on the big screen, but if you look on the very back of the bulletin, we print our good mission every week to remind you what we believe our mission, what we believe our purpose is, and that G-O-O-D stands for to love God. I mean, we are here to glorify God, not because he needs our praise, but because he's deserving of our praise, and we need to praise him. We're here to love one another. And that love for God and that love for one another should naturally spill outside of these walls to love others, to bring them to him, and to make disciples. And we are striving to make disciples who will make disciples. And we're, we're, not, just asking for, we're not just asking for people to make decisions. We want them to become disciples. To not just say, yeah, I like Jesus. We want you to be like Jesus. We want to follow in his footsteps. And that is God's plan for the church. And this is a plan that will go forever. And when you are connected, when you are a part of a church, when, when you connect to a church uh, as a member, you are connecting to God's eternal purpose. It gives us a sense of belonging it gives us a sense of significance and a direction that fulfills our longing for purpose. Number two, when I'm connected as a church member, it connects me to Christ's eternal body. It connects me to Christ's eternal body. There are several different metaphors that are used in the New Testament to describe what the church is, but the one that is used the most in the New Testament is the body, that the church is the body of Christ. One such place you see that I put on your outline and here on the big screen is from Ephesians chapter 1, 22 and 23. God has put everything under the authority of Christ. And God gave him this authority for the benefit of his church, which is the body of of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. And when you are committed and you are connected as a member of the church, you are connected to the body of Christ. And being connected to a church family means that you're something far greater than just in and of yourself, but that you are connected to the organic, the living body of the church, which is Christ's body of which he is the head. You know, the church is not just an organization right? It's not like I belong to, I belong to the American Legion. I got a car and I keep it in my wallet. It says I'm a card carrying member, right? But, but the church is not an organization. The church is an organism. It is the body of Christ. And when we are connected and committed, we become a part of that body of Christ. We are the body of Christ, and as church members, it means that you are connected. Now, when you became a Christian, you became a part of the body in a universal sense, but then you choose to connect to a local body. First, I didn't put this on your outline. You might just make a note in the margin. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and also Romans chapter 12. It's really easy to remember because it's the same chapter in both books, Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12 teaches that the body of Christ is made up of many different parts. And that's true with the church, right? We have all kinds of different parts and members of the church. Each member is unique 
We all have different roles. We all have different gifts. We all have different functions. But we all belong to the one body of Christ. I mean, we are literally hands and feet for Jesus, mouth for Jesus. I was talking to one person about this not too long ago, which I'm not a very important part of the body. I'm like, well, yeah, you are. I mean, if, if you're a member, you're a part of the well, body. I'm probably like the toenail of the body. Well, have you ever lost a toenail? I have. And I missed it. Amen? I, I missed that toenail. You know? And others think things like, well, you know, I'm, I'm not up front or I'm not teaching a Bible. You know, what is always seen is not always what the most important part of a body is, Right? I mean, at, at Christine and I, we have how, uh, our house is pretty well lit. We have skylights, which are great during the day. We have all kind of lighting in the house, lighting outside the house. But do you know what one of the most important lights in our house is? Is at night, I've got a night light right at the base of, of the doorway to and from our bedroom that goes, leads to the bathroom. That is an important light in the dark. Amen? I mean, it's small, it may seem insignificant when you see all the bright lights, but I need that light because before that light's the reason I didn't have a toenail. All right? <laughs> so it is. You are a part. If, when you are connected, when you are committed as a member of the church, you are a part of the body of Christ. And any time a body part is cut off, you know what it is? Useless. And it will die. It's no good. And you only grow spiritually. The only way that you're going to continue to grow spiritually is if you are connected to the body of Christ. It's where spiritual growth happens. It's why I called this series that let's grow together. Because we are in this together. Being connected to the body of Christ gives support. It gives strength. You have growth and maturity, uh, belonging and identity, right? Who you are in Christ. Being connected to the body of Christ gives us a spiritual home, a place where we not only receive, but we also con contribute. You know, there's something you are meant to do. Each of us is essential to the body as a whole. And together we become a powerful force of good in the world, displaying Christ's love and transformation. Now, the benefit of being connected is that it does connect me to the body of Christ, and that's how I grow. But another benefit that's really important, number three, being connected to a church as a church member, number three, it connects me to Jesus' power. We have a purpose, we're a part of a body, and then we're given the power to fulfill that purpose and to be a meaningful part of the body. And that power comes from Christ alone. Being connected to Jesus' eternal power is one of the greatest blessings of being involved in a church. Jesus is the source of all strength, all authority, all power, both in heaven and on earth. And when you are committed and you are connected to a body of Christ, you are a part of the purpose of the church, then you are plugged into the power that can come from Christ alone. Real quickly, several years, many years ago, goodness, I've, I've been out of college over 20 years now. That's hard to believe. When I was at college, I had a work study that I did, and I worked in the cafeteria. One of my jobs every morning in the cafeteria was to make coffee, and we had one of these huge industrial coffee makers. It could do like two pots at a time. And after you did two pots, you put those pots on top to keep them warm. And you could do two more pots. And the water was constantly hot in there. When you would fill the, re re the reservoir up, it just instantly would heat it. So it would make coffee really quick. One day I was talking to a friend of mine. I was behind the counter. He's in front of the counter. I had just made coffee. He was getting some coffee. And as we were talking, I noticed on the back of that big coffee machine, there was this black cap. I go, well, that's weird. I've never noticed that before. Is that a drain plug? I wonder what that is. So curiosity got the best of me. I unscrewed that cap. I took it off. And inside, there was this glass tube with two silver caps on each side of the tube. Well, I don't, what is that? So I got a hold of it to find out what it was. I found out what it was. That was a fuse that went to the 220 volt of, of power that was going to that sucker. Man, that thing lit me up. I, I couldn't let go. My hair was standing short. Sparks were flying. My friend Mark is laughing at me. Finally, I got it off. My fingertips were black, and I couldn't straighten my elbow for like a week, right? And, and here was the point. When I was plugged into that 
source of power, it was pretty obvious to the people who were laughing at me on the other side of the counter, right? When you are plugged into Jesus, you are plugged into the greatest power source in the universe, and people around you will not be able to help but to see that, right? And that's one of the benefits. That's one of the, 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 just the blessings that happens when I'm connected and a part of a church body, the body of Christ. I love this passage from John 15. Living here where we live, this is very applicable. Remain in me. This is part of what Floyd read for us, John 15, verses 4 and 5. Remain in me. You may have memorized this passage as abide with me. I like like that just because of the old song that we used to sing. But remain in me, and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must be in the vine. Now, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, look what this says. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You might circle that word nothing on your outline. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Our connection to Jesus is what empowers us. It's what makes it possible for us to bear fruit, meaning that what we say we believe and the way we behave when we leave church lines up because it's the power of Jesus through the Holy Spirit that makes you bear that fruit. Being a part, being connected to Jesus is where we find life. We literally rely on Jesus for our spiritual uh, strength and for the ability to live the life he's calling us to live. And we live in a part of the country, we understand this, we see grapevines all over the place, right? Whenever Christine and I have friends and family that come from the the right coast and they they want to come visit us over here on the wrong coast, one of the things I love to show them, one of the things I love to show them are all the vineyards. And we'll go for drives through the vineyard, and you see these grapes, especially if they come during the right time of year, during the harvest when the grapes... But you know what I've never seen? I've never seen grapes growing that weren't connected to the vine. Right? I mean, have you? And in fact, when you have grapes that aren't are connected to the divine, you know what you call that? Raisins. That's what that is, right? I mean, it, we need to be connected to the body of Christ because that's where we find the strength of Christ. Anything disconnected from power is pretty much worthless. You have a toaster at home. If you don't have your toaster plugged in, you don't make toast, Right? We, most of us carry, I don't have mine in my pocket, mine's over there being used as one of our cameras to be online this morning, but our, our phones. I mean, think of all the stuff you can do with your phone, from making a call to, to checking your banking to, to making and scheduling an appointment. I can order my medications from the VA hospital on my phone just with one click. I can take a picture and literally send it to hundreds of people literally all over the world in just a matter of seconds. But the moment that phone is not connected to a power source, you know what it is? A paperweight, right? You want to get, those of you who still have kids at home, if you have teenage kids at home, you want to get their attention, just turn the Wi-Fi off for a few minutes. They'll they'll be right, they'll be right out, right? I mean, you need to be connected. And Jesus is the eternal power that gives us strength in our weakness. He gives us the ability to overcome challenges And he empowers us to even serve one another. Being connected as a church member has great benefits. It connects me to God's eternal purpose. It connects me to Christ's eternal body. It connects me to Jesus' eternal power. But I want to give you just one more. These aren't the only four benefits. But number four is my favorite of these. Number four, it connects me to God's eternal family. Being a connected and committed member of the church connects me to God's eternal family. 
Oh, without a doubt. I mean, the, the, the church, is the, they, we are the called out. We are the saved. We, we are a flock. The Bible even says that we are a temple because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. We are a building. You know, we say, that, well, the church isn't a, a, a building. You're right. But, but as the church, we are a building because it's where God is, is dwells. It's where he lives. The, the church is the body of Christ. There are so many things that the Bible uses to help us understand what we as a church are called to be. But my favorite, my favorite is that we... We are the family of God. You can't get this. To be a part of a family of God, there is no place else in the world to find that outside of the church. Christians without church, a, a Christian with, without a church family is, is like an orphan. You know, when I was born, m- most of you know that I was adopted. When I was born, I was born into the human race. But I didn't belong to a family until someone chose to bring me home and say that you are now a part of our family. That's what God does for each and every one of us when we are connected to the church. We belong, we are connected to God's Family. So here's what he says in Romans 8, 16. God's spirit joins himself to our spirits to, and I love this part, to declare that we are God's children. Now, I, I don't know who you think you are and, and, it, and what you have been told, what, what people at work might think about you, but if you are connected to Christ, if you are a part of God's eternal purpose, if you are a member of his body, if you are clothing yourself with Christ and receiving the eternal power of Christ, Jesus, God declares that you are his child. That's awesome. I was not born a Donnelly. But when my family took me home, they declared that I am a Donnelly. I love that. Proud of that. I, I, I'm always boasting about my, my Irish heritage. In fact, did you know Tuesday, this Tuesday is halfway to St. Patrick's Day. September, isn't that awesome? I, I, I wasn't born that way. <laughs> I shared this before with some of you. I was always afraid to do one of those DNA testings because I would have been just crushed if I would have done that and found out like, you know, I'm everything but Irish. Yeah. (laughs) Fortunately, I finally did it. Fortunately, I'm 10% Irish. I I got it. I don't know where it came from, but I got it. I wasn't a Donnelly until I was declared a Donnelly in Christ, in the church, Belonging to and being connected to the church means that you are connected to the family of God. So look at this next verse, 1 Timothy 3.15. I want you to know how people who are members of God's family must live. God's family is the church. That's pretty straightforward, amen? What is the church? The church is the family of God. The church is more than finding a place to worship. It's more than a group of people to to socialize with. It's about belonging to a family that spans time of eternity and that is rooted in the love of God. Being connected to the eternal body of Christ means that I belong, that that I'm accepted, that that it's where I find support and encouragement. It's where I have, it's where we as the church have unity in diversity, in my opinion, church, one of the biggest, biggest drawing factors of a church family, at least what a church family should be, is how different we can be, but still be united in our love for God and in the mission he's called us to. That goes beyond a skin color. That, that goes beyond what you would vote for. I mean, none of that, that, we can have all those differences in here. I mean, there are people in here who get married on a Saturday during college football. Can you imagine that? (laughs) Right? And yet, yet somehow, we can still get along. We can still love each other because we got a purpose that's greater than that. We, We are a part of a body that's eternal. We are plugged into a power that's the greatest power source ever. And we are a part of God's family. 
Now, do you know, I have one more scripture I want to give you, and then I'm going to close. And then right after this, you don't, today, you don't even have to beat the Catholics down to Chili's. We're just going to do right across the hall. We got a big meal planned for you, and I hope you can stay, eat with us, and let us get to meet you and know you a little bit better. But do you know what the number one job, do you know what the most important thing is that you are supposed to do as a committed, connected member of the family of God? I can show you what it is. It's the last scripture. It's this right here on the big screen. Love your brothers and sisters in God's family. I'm so glad that God said love and not like. Amen? Sometimes it's okay. I'm sure there are times in the last 13 years you haven't liked me. But I'm so glad that you are my church family who loves me. There's a lot of things that you can be connected to. There are a lot of organizations that you can belong to. You can buy all the fancy clothes because you want people to see what the label says on your clothes, right? But there's only one thing that we belong to that is eternal, and that's the church of Jesus Christ. Nations will come and go. Organizations will come and go. But the church is the only thing that will last forever. That's why I very purposefully had you fill in that the benefits of being connected as a church member is you are connected to this eternal purpose, his eternal body, his eternal power, and God's eternal family. And what I want for you this morning, whether this is your church home or not, and if you're looking for a church home, I hope this is it. If you already have a church home, I want you to be more involved there. There are some great churches in this area. There really are. I meet with several area pastors every Wednesday. We get together. We pray for you guys. We talk about you guys. We, we, we try to trade members sometimes. Like, hey, I'll give you two of these for one of them. I mean, we, but I mean, there are great churches. So I'm not saying you need to be a part of this church. What I'm saying is you need to be plugged into a church because you were created for community. And the only way we're going to cultivate that growth is if we do it together. Now, if you are looking for a church family, I'd love for you to be here right? We're not perfect. No church is because it's made up of a bunch of imperfect people, right? I've told people, you've heard me say a hundred times, if you're looking for a perfect church, this isn't it, right? Don't come here. And if you ever do find the perfect church, don't go to it because it won't be perfect anymore because you'll be there. Amen? <laughs> so might as well just stay here, right? But my goal is that we would, we would go from just being an attender to being a member, from being more than just a believer to saying, hey, I belong to something. Going from just being a consumer to being a contributor. To go from being a spectator to being a participator. Because being connected to the body of Christ connects you to God's eternal purpose. It connects us to Jesus' power and it makes us a part of the family of God. And we want to cultivate these connections so that the Lord, through us, through his power, can, can just make a, 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 just a dramatic difference, not only in our lives, but in the lives of the people around us. Let me pray for you. Lord, I ask a blessing on everyone here. Father, I'm so...